Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Touring with Travis. My name is Travis Gilbert. I'm the Educator and Collections Coordinator at the Old Baldy Foundation. And we are here this afternoon inside the Generator Society Hall, which is a multi-purpose uh, facility within the Bald Head Association's headquarters or uh, office space. It is uh, located just down the street from Old Baldy Lighthouse. And we're inside today. We weren't sure what the rain would be doing. Uh, it's been thunderstorming in Bald Head Island all morning long. So we figured we'd uh, call it safe and stay inside this afternoon. And it's perfect because we wanted at one point or another to bring you inside this hall, which is dedicated to the memory of the 19 families who built 17 homes on Bald Head Island before electricity was delivered here in the year 1981. And their names are enshrined on the wall here at the Generator Society Hall. We're knowing it's gonna be kind of difficult to see their names. I'm gonna get really close up to it and share just a little bit about each individual. So hopefully you'll be able to recall their names out there. I know it's uh, not the best viewership. And additionally, there is also their logo here, the Generator Society. It was kind of coined when this a group of individuals knew that electricity was going to be delivered to this island in 1981. They wanted a way to remember themselves and to remember uh, the trials and tribulations that these individuals endured in the 1980 or 1970s on Bald Head Island. So I see Phil is listening and Jeff is out there and Dawn, it's great to hear from you folks. Uh, Jeff is saying good afternoon from Garrett and Jeff. We've never been there. Oh no, well, it's a, a wonderful space. You uh, may see lots of different events, uh, meetings, all kinds of uh, things occur. It's a, it's a beautiful space uh, for use of the community. Again, dedicated to these individuals. Uh, so let's go back to this board here. We'll talk about uh, that name right up there, F.A. Byrne. Uh, that is uh, Bill and Billy G. Byrne. His uh, real name was Freeman, and they were from Lumberton, North Carolina. He was a physician and a radiologist, and they were one of the first builders here on Bald Head Island. They built a home called Skylark, located on Fort Holmes Trail in the year 1974. They eventually built another home overlooking the creek. You can see uh, F.A. Byrne there at the top. The other folks uh, who also may be the first builders on Bald Head Island, they kind of vie or vet one another to be first is B.E. Tudor, Bynum Tudor and his, uh, or excuse me, no, 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 I'm uh, all going off here. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, the uh, second individuals uh, to uh, buy here on the island and to construct a home is right here, uh, Mr. Wester, T.B. Uh, Wester. Stands for Thad and Lee Wester. They are also from Lumberton, North Carolina and he was a pediatrician. Uh, they uh, built a house called Raccoon Hilton. It's my favorite of the names of the Generator Society. That was located on Bay Tree Terrace, not far from the Burns on Fort Holmes Trail. And the, uh, the um, Tudors also built, or excuse me, the Westers also built uh, in the year 1974. Thad Wester additionally was the first mayor of Bald Head Island when this island was incorporated into a municipality in the year 1985. So I apologize there. I kept getting Tudor and Wester mixed up. So we have Thad and Lee Wester, and we also have Bill and Billy Jean Byrne and those are the two families that consider themselves the first in the Generator Society, completing their homes in the year 1970.
four. All right, so we have McCallie's listening. Hello, McCallie, up there in Wilmington. And Dawn from up in the Outer Banks, uh, she says, hey, Travis, so happy you're giving these virtual tours and history lessons. Dawn, well, it's our pleasure. It's uh, keeping me busy and keeping me sane during these times that, uh, you know, without this creativity, we wouldn't have much history going on. And somebody like me and a little bit of history goes a long way. <laughs> so I know that you're the same way, Dawn. So thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. All right. The next family I want to go to is the Krolls. Uh, and they are, it's JG up there at the top. I'll try to get a right angle so you can see it. It's very difficult to see through here. There we go. JG Kroll. And uh, that stands for Joe and Burnus. They were from Hendersonville, North Carolina. He was a dentist and he also was a landlord. He owned Lakeshore Apartments. They built on Fort Holmes Trail in 1974, not very far from Bill and Billie Jean Byrne. They considered themselves neighbors. Uh, and uh, they did not have a house name, unfortunately. One of, there are several um, homeowners that, that did not choose to name their homes. If they did, I'm going to share that with you. The Capertons is next. You see JB there, uh, there we go, you can quite see it there. It's Bo and Mildred, they were from Culpeper, Virginia. They owned some stationery and office supply stores. They built on Laughing Gull Trail. They also completed their house in 1974, and it is the fourth home, Capertons, you can see right there in the sunlight. Uh, they, uh, Bo died in 1984, uh, unfortunately. Uh, they called their home Milbo Hilton. And uh, I love the automobile, the Jeep that they had to traverse the island. Uh, they called it the Automobile. <laughs> so uh, quite, a, quite a colorful bunch there, the number four. The Cogdens are next. They are located here, E.E. Uh, e. Cogden. E.E. E. Cogden is Earl and his wife, Kitty. They were from High Point, North Carolina. They built their home on South Beach and it was named Sea Turtle. And I love it, it's not C as an S-E-A, it's literally the, the letter C and turtle. Earl was the CEO of Old Dominion Freight Line. Next, uh, what I was getting mixed up there with the Westers is B.E. Tudor, Bidem and Esther Tudor. They were from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Mr. Bynum Tudor was the vice president for employee relations for Nabisco, a company that probably is very familiar to you all out there. Uh, they built a beautiful house on Laughing Gull Trail in July of 1975. That home was completed and it is known as Hilltop. And it is, uh, I gotta say, my favorite of the Generator Society homes. Uh, you can see it from South Beach, uh, South Baldhead Wine and South Beach. It kind of sits up on uh, the sand dune or the ridge line that traverses Baldhead Island and it's all white. Uh, so it really sticks out. It contrasts with the maritime forest uh, behind it, uh, all the lush green, the white really contrasts. And up there on the hilltop, uh, as its name implies, I think it, it is my favorite of the Generator Society homes. That was Mr. Bynum Tudor and his wife Esther. They were number six. The Cosgroves are next, and they still have a connection to the island. Their son is still involved here in the island, real estate. Uh, Ken and Eleanor Cosgrove, they were from Hendersonville, North Carolina. He was a physician in internal medicine, and they built a home in 1975 on Morning Warbler Drive called the Seven Seas because it was Mr. and Mrs. Cosgrove and five children that were uh, spent some of their time out here. Uh, so the house is known as the Seven Seas, and they were the seventh individuals to build a house out here on Baldhead Island. Up next we have the Harpers. 
Uh, if you are a resident of southeastern North Carolina or familiar at least with the Southport area, that name Harper will ring a bell for you. Um, it was Jim and Margaret Harper, and they uh, published a newspaper in Southport that's still in print today, is uh, the Stateport Pilot. Should ring a bell for you all. Uh, Margaret was an independent insurance agent, and they built a home on Steed Bonnet Wine in 1975 called the Pilot House, which is believed to be the eighth home constructed on Bald Head Island. Uh, Jim uh, passed away a few years ago, uh, and I'm not, I, honestly, I'm not sure if Margaret is still with us or not, uh, but I know that their uh, just presence, that family's presence in the Southport area is really remarkable. They've left an imprint, and that uh, leaps the Cape Fear River and includes impacting Bald Head Island as well. The buns are next. They are some of my favorites. You see TD bun up there. I'm gonna get it in the sunlight for you. TD bun. Uh, that's Buck and Becky bun from Raleigh, North Carolina. They are the individuals that uh, purchased the old circa 1915. Oh, thank you, Phil. She is not with us. Uh, Mrs. Harper is not with us anymore. Uh, the Buns, yes, uh, Buck and Becky Bunn from Raleigh. They are the individuals that purchased the circa 1915 Cape Fear Coast Guard Station on South Beach, and they adaptively reused that home into the modern vacation or residence that it is today. They ended up moving that old life-saving service boathouse away from the beach and across South Bald Head Wine towards that ridge line that Hilltop was constructed on. So today it is on Sea Lavender Court. Again, it is the boathouse constructed in 1915 for the United States Coast Guard Station on Cape Fear. So that home has uh, quite a lineage and quite a pedigree in history. But the Buns, uh, they only owned it a short time and you will learn that the Thomases, Pat and Joe Thomas, see their name there, they purchased this uh, old boathouse in 1976 and completed what the Buns had started by restoring the old boathouse and adaptively reusing it into what they called Happy House. <laughs> Uh, Pat and Joe Thomas, they were from High Point, North Carolina, and uh, they were a manufacturer of school and transit buses. Uh, it was really a lovely uh, home. We're so thankful for the Buns and the Thomas families for preserving that boathouse. The other structures from Cape Fear Life Saving Service Station and the Coast Guard Station uh, they were lost to time, either due to fire or due to adaptively reusing old cottages, aka recycling the wood, tearing down the cottage. Uh, so all that was left is this boathouse. And the reason that we have that cultural resource on the island today is due to the efforts of the Buns and the Thomases of the Generator Society era that decided to call that old boathouse home or happy house. So it makes me very happy that they chose uh, to uh, historically preserve that structure so we can share it on our tours today. That also uh, gives you an idea of why we say that there were 17 homes built in the Generator Society era, but 19 families. You see, the Buns purchased uh, the boathouse, and then the Thomases purchased the boathouse from the Buns just a year later before electricity was delivered to the island. So in one home, you have two owners before electricity was delivered. And you're gonna find that there's another family that has a very similar experience. And that is why we have two extra families without a home to call themselves uh, independent. Uh, 17 homes, but 19 families. Uh, we'll leap into the other folks, the other exceptions in just a few minutes. So back to the board here for us. 
Uh, next, we have uh, Charlie Young down here. Real easy to get to that one. I don't have to reach. Uh, Charlie Young was from Charlotte, North Carolina. He was Young Ford Company. He was an automobile dealer. And in 1978, he purchased and developed what is today Middle Island, which is a private community on the second of the three barrier islands that create Smith Island Complex. And uh, before he purchased Middle Island in 1978, turned it into Middle Island Plantation, he built a house on South Baldhead Wine in 1976 and completed the home in 1977. Uh, he called it Neptune because it was right there on South Baldhead Wine where the Cape Fear River dumps out into the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a very uh, kind of fulfilling name uh, for Neptune, old Neptune, the house, watching the waters in the Cape Fear empty out into the great Atlantic Ocean. That uh, Neptune is thought to be number 10 uh, of Bald Head Island's Generator Society. Next is the Sand Fiddler, which is still with us today. We point out the Sand Fiddler, now known as the Blue Pearl, on our tours. Oh, Susan Weinman, uh, she said, I joined late. What building are you in? Hey, Susan, we are in the Bald Head Association building in the Generator Society Hall. Uh, it is raining here on Bald Head Island. It's thunderstorming all day. Uh, so we had to come up with a rain plan, and we thought it'd be great to talk about all the Generator Society members since we've only gotten to, I think, I believe two or three uh, previously. Kind of lump them all in together, be in the cover from the thunderstorm, and still have a lesson this afternoon. So Susan, again, we're in the Generator Society Hall within the Bald Head Association building. All right, let's go back to our board here. Next, we have Billy and Charlotte Dunlap. I would consider them probably the most uh, colorful of the characters in the Generator Society. It's up there pretty tall, but you can see W.N. Dunlap there. And Billy and Charlotte Dunlap, they were from Raleigh, North Carolina. Billy was a physician, uh, and they built Sand Fiddler in 1976 on South Baldhead Wine with Bob and Frankie McMahon. And they were from Raleigh as well. It wasn't until 1982, after electricity was delivered to the island, that the Dunlaps purchased the Sand Fiddler, Fiddler uh, independently. So two families kind of built this home and used it uh, as a timeshare, but I'm sure, I know it was not as formal as a timeshare, one big happy family. And uh, that is home number 11. Uh, Charlotte uh, and Billy, uh, they continued. Charlotte uh, was on Bald Head Island uh, last fall uh, for a dedication ceremony at the marina. So Charlotte is still, uh, at least visits Bald Head Island. The Cunninghams are next. You can see right above the Dunlaps there, uh, Cunningham. J.W. Cunningham, trying to get the sun in the correct angle to at least somewhat highlight it. Bill and Pat Cunningham, they were from Cary, North Carolina. Bill was a professor of um, psychology at North Carolina State University, and Pat was a school principal. They built a home on Fly Catcher Trail in 1978. It's considered house number 12, and uh, it is not named. They have not named that house. Next we have the Caroons. They are right here. And they built the Blue Crab on a horse mint trail in the years 1978 and into 1979. It is number 13. They were from Southport, North Carolina. Seafood and crab business over there that they ran. So they didn't come far in uh, coming over here to Bald Head. They could see their home in Southport from the view of their home on Bald Head Island. Next we have the pools. I think uh, also one of my favorite homes. Uh, it is uh, located on Steed Bonnet Wind. It overlooks the golf course. And that's Frank and Harriet Pool. Let's see where they are here. Uh, right here, easy one for me. Uh, Frank and Harriet Poole were from Raleigh, North Carolina. 
Frank was a pediatrician. Harriet was uh, just a stay-at-home mom, a homemaker. They built this house and Steve Bonnet wined in 1978, known as the Tree House. Uh, and uh, it is house number 14. Wrapping up here, next we want to talk about Robin and Barbara Hayes. Barbara and Robert are right here. You see there in the snapshot. They were from Concord, North Carolina, out there towards Charlotte. They were involved in several businesses, including ladies, uh, kind of, uh, ladies clothing and land development. And uh, in addition, Robin was a member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. They, the Hayes, are who purchased the three Cape Fear Light Station Keeper's Cottages, otherwise known as Captain Charlie Station, and adaptively reused them, or at least restored those cottages in the years 1978 and 1979, and turned it into their property on Baldhead Island. Uh, they sold their property uh, a while back, and uh, now the Mitchell family owns Captain Charlie Station. But just like the boathouse, uh, we are so thankful uh, that the Hayes, that they had the foresight uh, to know what value those three keepers cottages would have on the identity and the culture of Baldhead Island. And uh, just like that boathouse that was preserved by the Buns and the Thomases, uh, we have a, you know, a debt of gratitude to the Hayes for preserving those buildings because uh, I have to post in the comments or you can go on oldbaldy.org that if you see the picture of what they found at Captain Charlie Station in the 70s, it was just a shell of a cottage or three cottages. Uh, it looked like the next big hurricane and they would have blown down. So there was a lot of maintenance required. Uh, you think uh, in 1938, around about, the United States Coast Guard took over responsibilities for the nation's lighthouses, and shortly thereafter, the keepers' cottages were abandoned. Uh, there was not a permanent kind of staff, let alone three permanent staff members, located and stationed at Cape Fear Light Station. The position became uh, kind of nomadic, uh, commuting if, in a sense, or at least commuting from the Coast Guard station. Eventually, of course, lighthouses are going to be automated, and that's going to um, take away even more responsibilities from a lighthouse keeper. So these keeper's cottages at Captain Charlie Station, uh, they were very derelict. They had been abandoned for decades and exposed to several hurricanes and the very harsh climate out here at Baldhead. So we have a lot to be thankful for with the Hayes to uh, do a little historic preservation and make sure those historic structures were left behind for us. So thank you to the Hayes, Robin, and Barbara. And uh, we are wrapping up here. We got two more. I want to talk about the Grubs who built Sand Dollar. OG Grubs you see right there. That's Reddy and Bippy Grubbs. They were from Darien, Connecticut. They was the sales director of Field Crest Meals and uh, Mills, excuse me. And they built an oceanfront home on Flycatcher Trail in the years 1978 into 1979. It is home number 16 on Baldhead Island, and it was known as Sand Dollar. Now, last but not least. An unnamed home that is number 17, Harry and Elva Schmumming, uh, Schmulling, excuse me, I even practiced that one, Schmulling. Uh, Harry and Elva, they were from Hickory, North Carolina. Harry was a data systems processing manager, and Elva owned an exclusive dress shop. They built a house on Horse Mint Trail in the spring of 1979. That was the last of the 17 homes that were constructed during the Generator Society era on Baldhead Island of these 19 families. All enshrined or etched here into the window at the Generator Society Hall at the Baldhead Association.
And Mimi, I agree. Mimi Hughes is listening and she says that list is so pretty and beautifully etched. I could not agree more. So these 19 families kind of paved the way for Bald Head Island as we know it today. And there's some of them still around. I had the opportunity to meet Billie Jean Byrne. Uh, hopefully one day meet Charlotte Dunlap. Uh, again, I think she's the most colorful character of the Generator Society era. But we have so much to be thankful for that these individuals paved the way for living on Bald Head Island, at least temporarily for most of them and uh, kind of coming up with this idea or nurturing this idea that we discussed in the two quarantine collections episodes this morning and yesterday morning. Uh, Bald Head Island is marrying man's needs with uh, nature, with preserving nature. You kind of come over here to Bald Head and nature is all around you and nature is respected. And uh, that is certainly in no small part thanks to the Generator Society, to these 19 families on that window who built these homes and lived out here without electricity. Ice was so valuable, it was called bald head diamonds. They could only communicate via CB powered radios. They had a golf course all to themselves and they had an inn, <laughs> a small little uh, hotel that certainly you didn't need reservations in the 1970s, but they loved it. You read their reminiscences, their recollections, their memoirs, if you will. They wouldn't have had it any other way. Well, they may have wanted electricity. That was pretty universal. They were all pretty excited about electricity. But they enjoyed Bald Head because of its natural beauty and its natural resources. And uh, that is very evident uh, to the documents I pulled out this morning and yesterday morning. So I wanted to tie this all together. Emmeline is saying, uh, these just get more and more interesting. Love hearing about the Generator Society, Dan and Emmeline up in Earliesville, Virginia. Good afternoon, Emmeline and Dan. I'm hoping that the storms weren't too terrible for you up there. I know I heard some reports from up in Maryland, DC. It got some nasty storms as well. So uh, I'm going to uh, let you all go for this afternoon. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for an edition of Quarantine Collections. In the meantime, you may want to visit oldbaldy.org and sign up for our virtual historic happy hour at 5 p.m. on May the 20th. It's a Wednesday evening. We're going to have it virtually. Tickets are $15, but if you go on oldbaldy.org and sign up for our online newsletter, you will find a code within that newsletter that you may use as a coupon to sign up for the happy hour virtually free. Our special guest speakers are John and Aida Havel from up in Cape Hatteras, and they will be speaking about Herbert Bamber, the gentleman that took the four photographs of Old Baldy Lighthouse in May of 1893 that we consider the first known photographs of North Carolina's oldest standing lighthouse. We're gonna hear all about his biography and his travels, and we'll explore in detail those photographs that depict Old Baldy Lighthouse in her prime time. So uh, we hope you can join us for that historic happy hour, and we hope you can join us tomorrow for more editions of this virtual programming. In the meantime, you all stay safe and you stay healthy out there, stay positive, and we will see you all in a future episode. Thanks, everybody.